A lot of rumors and speculation out there, so we try to separate the fact from the fiction with our KSAT Q&A, and we are joined as we are most Thursdays by infectious disease doctor from the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio, Dr. Ruth Bergeron. Dr. Bergeron, as always, thank you for your time. Uh, right off the top, I want to talk about the numbers that we've seen locally. We talked to the mayor yesterday, and he acknowledged they're seeing a steady growth, but right now the projections are it's more of a hill that's being climbed, not the mountain that we saw a few months ago. Your thoughts on that? I agree. It's been creeping up, so we got to pay attention. Um, but I continue to monitor those other populations that we've talked about before, such as the Bear County Jail and people going for elective surgery or dental procedures. And um, we are seeing very, very low positivity rates in those asymptomatic groups. Now, um, many parameters are being monitored and are important. Hospitalization rates are very, very important, as we've seen before. And the community positivity rate is, um, you know, how we compare ourselves to other communities across the nation. So being above 7% is not something we're too happy about. Um, but uh, we can hang on to this advantage if everybody keeps their mask up and their distance six feet and their hands washed. We can do it. So we're climbing that hill right now, but you look at where we are headed. You're looking at models all the time that really project where we could be. What do you think people need to understand about what the next couple of months might look like? We're hearing a lot of talk about, you know, a dark winter and, and things. I feel like people's anxiety is growing a little bit about the way things may play out in the next few months. What's your advice on that? I, I would say just, you know, stick to what we already know. Uh, we know we can do these ch behavioral changes that we've been doing. We just have to keep doing more of the same. It's not it's not some new intervention that's required. And look, there's bright spots on the horizon. You know, we got really good news about the, the preliminary data on the Pfizer uh, vaccine with 90 percent efficacy in, in protecting people in a preliminary data. This is unpublished and it's preliminary, but really promising information about the fact that these vaccines are probably going to protect. And the other piece of good news is a new drug that got emergency use authorization, this time for people that are not hospitalized and not requiring oxygen. So this is this is really a, an advance. Talk a little bit about, you know, Dr. Anthony Fauci talked about the fact that most Americans he believe should be able to get a COVID-19 vaccine by April. Is that a timetable that you think is doable? That's going to be a really tight timetable for us. It's going to require um, incredible focus and really working together as a community. Let me tell you why. Um, the vaccines that are coming out first use this mRNA platform and they require um, hyper cold storage. You may have heard about this. They come out of minus 80 freezers and you have to thaw it and give the vaccine pretty much right away. So you can't be letting uh, vials of vaccine sit around and wait until, you know, all day long to inject. It also realize you need to realize that most um, clinical facilities where vaccines are administered don't have minus 80 freezers. So we've got a big cold chain logistical problem that has to be solved. Um, those big old refrigerators are very expensive. Um, then we have the issue of vaccine hesitancy, which is a very real issue. And we've got a lot of work to do to get out and educate everybody and reassure people with the data that we have about the safety of this vaccine. Um, so I think it's that's a pretty tight timeline from Dr. Fauci, but I think we all ought to be striving to get organized, get our act together and try to get as many people immunized, be ready to immunize as many people as we can when we do have these vaccines. In the meantime, we all know what we need to do. We have to continue the social distancing, the mask wearing, but we're learning more about how masks actually protect us and the people around us. What do we know about that now? So um, there have been several pa papers coming out in the medical literature uh, making the case that it's not just about protecting other people. It's uh, also about protecting yourself. And we know this from um, larger scale epidemiologic data sets um, showing how much lower transmission is when everybody masks. And it does look like there's protection for the wearer in addition to protection by the wearer for people that are around them. Texas became the first state to hit 1 million cases. Uh, California hit 1 million, you know, I think it was like an hour ago. 
What does that say about the state of Texas? Does it say anything necessarily about the state of Texas? Well, no, never look at a numerator without a denominator. We're a big state. That's one thing it says about us. Um, and I, I do think that it, it says that we could do better, Steve and Myra. Um, if you look at other countries and how they've handled it, I, I love looking at New Zealand. I mean, their population is really small. There are islands in the Pacific, so it's hard to compare ourselves to them. But on a population basis, if we were like New Zealand, our country would be looking at less than 2,000 deaths right now. And we have almost 250,000 deaths. So it's, it's too bad. We can do better and we will do better. And we know what we need to do. Dr. Ruth Berg, we're an infectious disease doctor with the Long School of Medicine. As always, thanks for your insight and your time. Most welcome. We'll be right back.